Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. I felt his, his apology was insincere. A Minnesota man says he's sorry to the family of two young sisters he killed in a drunken driving car crash, saying he deserves to be locked up. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. James Yonke of Nielsville will spend 15 years in jail, another 10 years on probation. Eight months ago, Yonke was driving drunk near Hillsborough, going 140 miles an hour with the two young sisters in the car. Yonke lost control on a rough stretch of road, crashed. And the girls were killed. As Valley News Team's Nicole Johnson shows us, family members say they feel relief knowing Yankee is behind bars. I was just hoping he'd get more. I want the world to know I'm not the beast. That's what James Yankee told me just before he walked in for sentencing. Yeah. We're not supposed to bury our children for that. I'm so sorry. This was the first time many heard an apology since the death of Mercedes Rowley and her sister, Teja Byer, both in their early 20s. This gives us peace of mind that I don't have to, you know, drive around and shop at the same grocery store, you know, with my kids, you know, seeing, seeing the guy who killed their mom. Annalise is too young to know, but, um, you know, when I talk Eli into bed, you know, he's still blow a kiss to this guy, and, you know, he says, good night, mommy, mommy's in the stars, mommy's in heaven, that's all he knows. Marco Perez says he was hoping for the maximum sentence of 20 years. The judge gave Yonke 15, saying it's a hard reality, nothing can bring Teja and Mercedes back to life. There will never be closure, but that's that's just how life works that's the enigma of existence <laughs> we all face that in one way or another as he left the courtroom yonke said with tears in his eyes he has a heavy heart nicole johnson valley news live yonke's attorney tells us they might appeal the sentence and is hoping that yonke will get out in 10 years to our weather, not as warm today as we begin to see a return to some more normal January temperatures. Let's go to Hutch for a word on what we can expect tonight. Hutch? Well, it's definitely foggy across a good portion of the viewing area. The fog all day was in the eastern third of North Dakota. It's now shifting eastward. Fargo's visibility is down to under three miles. Real soupy air, though, out near Fergus Falls and Lakes Country toward Wadena. Also, the Crookston, the Thief River area, seeing some reduced visibilities this evening. And the radar showing through Lakes Country some mixed precipitation. So watch for isolated, slippery spots on roads if you're traveling tonight. Increasing wind and gusty. It's from the north. And that means a cool down is in order. Temperatures falling through the 30s this evening with gusty north winds, making it feel like the low 20s and teens most of the evening. And coming up, even colder air returns to the valley. Averages this time of the year are in the teens. We will return to the teens. Details in a few minutes. It's been a good run. It has. Hey, thanks, Hutch. Your next family night out for a dinner could soon cost a little more. A new bill could have restaurant servers in North Dakota making a set wage with tips as a bonus. The bill states that over a four-year period, wages would increase by a dollar every two years until reaching seven and a quarter an hour. Without tips, servers only make four dollars and eighty-six an hour now. But with tips, they usually make more than the state minimum wage. A restaurant that we spoke with says if this bill passes, the costs would be passed on. To me, you know, if I paid somebody a uh, hundred dollars an hour, that's fine with me. But I'm going to have to be able to charge. $300 for a pizza and so it's uh, in economics it usually all unfortunately trickles down to the to the end consumer and the house bill's author Josh Boucher of Fargo says it's likely that the bill won't pass since it didn't get approved in committee today now your favorite pair of jeans now could soon be a few dollars cheaper if you shop in North Dakota Senate bill 2223 would create a sales tax exemption from clothes bought in the state and then reimburse cities where those clothes were bought Valley News Team's Bradford Eric talked with people around the area today to find out if they could get on board with lower prices, and the answer may surprise you. Taxes on goods and services, how often do we think about them? For many folks I talked with in downtown Fargo this afternoon, they say it doesn't really factor into their purchasing decisions. Clothing, for example, may be a bit cheaper across the river in Minnesota, but do people actually make the trek to save money? Sometimes convenience is a little more important than 
a couple bucks. But if I'm gonna buy the same item that I find here and I find it somewhere else and it, there is no sales tax to it, oh, definitely. I would buy it somewhere else. I can't honestly say it would make a difference. But I know that I've definitely made decisions to shop in Moorhead because I know that it's going to be a little bit cheaper. Um, as a consumer, I know that I'd be happier if there was no sales tax in Fargo, although I'm not sure that my behavior would be incredibly affected. But when it comes to other products, tobacco, for example, you bet your wallet some look at the price. One man I talked with didn't want to be on camera, but he offered this advice. You buy the same thing enough times, you're going to start to take notice of how much you're shelling out. He lives in Moorhead, works in Fargo, and pays nearly 50% less per can in North Dakota, where he's a regular customer. It seems folks in the Valley are willing to search around to save money when it comes to some products. But for others, like clothing, they're okay with exchanging convenience for a few dollars more. In Fargo, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. As of this morning, Senate Bill 2223 was being discussed in committee at the North Dakota Legislature. The renewed search for Cole Schwint is off for now. He's the Moorhead man who disappeared while snowmobiling on the Cheyenne River in West Fargo nearly two months ago. Our milder winter weather and a desire to bring closure for Schwint's family brought search dog teams from the Twin Cities, St. Cloud and Fargo. Paired with Valley Water Rescue, they drilled holes in the ice in hopes the dogs might hit on a scent. Valley Water Rescue tells us that a special type of sonar they were planning on using in this search has not yet arrived, but they say that once the equipment does arrive, they'll get together with West, with West Fargo Police again and develop a plan for a new search. The investigation into that home explosion in Bemidji, Minnesota is getting a bird's eye view. A drone was used by the Grand Forks County Sheriff's Department. Authorities received authorization from the FAA to use the Grand Forks Sheriff's Department USA unit to take aerial pictures and video of the disaster. The drone was flown by UND UAS pilots. All pictures and video are now with the Beltrami County Sheriff's Department as evidence. The Grand Forks County Sheriff's Department was the first law enforcement agency in the nation granted federal permission to fly unmanned aircraft systems at night throughout its jurisdiction. An overflow tank caused a major oil spill in the state. The North Dakota Department of Health says more than 15,000 gallons of oil and nearly as much brine spilled in Williams County, 11 miles northwest of Williston. Much of the fluid's already been recovered, but following several recent oil and brine spills, tomorrow North Dakota legislators are going to be talking about and introducing a package of bills pushing for what they are calling smart oversight over the development of the state's natural resources. It is a three-way race as a farmer, former Cass County Commissioner and member of the FM Diversion Authority says he's now running for the Fargo City Commission. Scott Wagner announced that he wants to be on the city's governing board. The post is up for grabs after Commissioner Tim Mahoney decided to run for mayor. The city charter requires a commissioner running for mayor to give up his commission job. Wagner joins school board member John Strand and former commission candidate Tony Gehrig in the race. The election is set for the end of April. A triumphant day thanks to the hard work of our community. Honorary Campaign Chairman Maury Lanning announced the results today for the Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle Campaign. This year, donations were above and beyond. Nearly $890,000 contributed, and that not only meets the campaign's goal, it tops it by 20000 That's a good thing because Salvation Army officials are saying they're seeing the number of people coming in for them needing help increasing a lot. Enjoying the outdoors through conservation, that's a strong tradition throughout North Dakota, and you have a chance to help non-game game species. North Dakota is one of the only states not funded by the general public. 99% of the game and fish funding comes from license sales and taxes on hunting and fishing equipment. Now, if you're interested in, say, helping songbirds or other non-game animals, there's a way you can help. There is a voluntary program on your North Dakota State tax form called Watchable Wildlife, where you can make contributions. One of those programs is a prairie project in Grand Forks County. The funds also go towards small grants for non-game research. If you're interested, there's a number on your screen for more information, 701-328. 6300. Well, coming up later on Valley News Live at 6, the early morning coffee run with a stop from local authorities. And it's been a gray day across portions of the valley. Fog, haze, mist continue with slippery conditions possible. Cold air is on the way as well. I'll tell you all about it coming up next.